I would tell you probably the most important interview I ever did, and I'm not talking about the most sensational interview, which was Mayweather, was uh, talking to uh, another guy you may have heard of from where you're from, Buster Douglas. Mm. Yes. After his fight with Tyson. And Buster, in part, had been galvanized into being and, and were finally fully showing the kind of talent he had on the big stage um, by the fact that his mother had died a few weeks before and that somehow it had galvanized his spirit. Um, and this was something that had to be brought up. And he, in talking to him afterwards, I was, gonna, I was holding back. Um, as one often does in an interview for the question that's going to come after somebody is settled down and comfortable and you want to, uh, to get to the heart of, of the matter. Um, and he was so overcome with emotion. He wanted to get to the heart of the matter before I did. And he couldn't speak. And... He was trying to gather himself to be able to address the world. Uh, most fighters like to do that, by the way. They want to be seen and heard. Um, and I had the mic, and he was trying to pull himself together, and his handlers were saying, Let's go back to the dressing room. Let's go back to the dressing room. But he didn't want to go back to the dressing room. And it may have been only 20 seconds, maybe 15, but that could be an eternity um, when there's nothing being said. Larry Merchant is with the new champion. Larry, if you can hear me, take it away. It's all yours. All right, I'm with Buster Douglas. Buster. Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah, it's happening. Oh, pick this up. Why did it happen, James? Because I wanted it. Why? Why did you win this fight that nobody on the planet gave you? Because it's mother. In what way? God bless her heart. Yeah. Let him go, Larry. After he go. got knocked down, I let said you go. can't let, let him go. beat. You want to go, James? No, no, let him talk. Number one, boy. Well, are you saying? I mean, you came out here more animated than we've ever seen you, more focused than we've ever seen you, and you're crediting it to the fact that the death of your mother just what focused your mind what? <laughs> I was already focused, you know. Well, what surprised you from the get-go? What did you? What were you going to try to do from the get-go? That's what I did. Whoop his ass. You know. I mean, you come to fight, I come to fight. I told you in the, in, in the room. I said, but it was time for James Dove to come out, out of the closet. But it seems you had. But you know, I told you that I also had times where I had great fights that would come back with two or three different fights that was mediocre, you know, and I would leave a lot of doubt. I don't blame you guys. You guys go on what you see. You understand? But I know, and my people know, that he what the real saying. James Douglas is all about. Every every challenger for Mike Tyson says the same thing. But you did something in there. I told you. To, I told to you to neutralize him. Why my nose? Why my nose? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All right. Just one moment, but. I told you in the room, I said, but you they weren't James Douglas. But you didn't let him get off. It seemed every time he wanted to throw a punch, either you beat him to it or you smothered him. Was that the idea? Well, I just did what I did, you know. I went out there and fought my fight. All right. Now, yeah, very instinctive, very instinctive. All right, now you had him, but you get knocked down. At the well, end yeah, you know, and that, that was a good shot. I mean, you know, like I said before, a man over 200 pounds has a good shot. Did, he, did you get careless? Did you think you I think had so. Him? That was just starting to get real relaxed, you know, and I got, I got shook. I mean, well, I got hurt, hit, and I came back, you know, sucked it up. Because I knew I had him also. You know, I knew he was, every time he would try to get off, I would come back, you know, and, and offset him by beating him to his punch. You know, because Mike, well, early, early in the fight, you know, Mike would come out, you know, and, and throw his big shots. You know, so what I would do is just, you know, go, go with him and come back with my own. 
you know. And another thing, I was very relaxed. I wasn't afraid of the man. I but feared no man because I believe in God. That's the only man I fear. You know, thank God. I give this praise to the Lord Jesus right, Christ. But you, but, you, but you know, you know that you're in there with Mike Tyson. After the knockdown, did you think he would come on, or did you know you had to stop his momentum at that point? Well, yeah, I knew he was going to come because he's a champion. I mean, he's going to suck it up and come and get me. You know, and 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 and. I was ready for it. I was aware. I was aware of everything. You know, totally aware of everything. And Dad, this one is for you. I love you. Yeah. Well, could you see the confusion in his eyes? You, you, one of his well, eyes I was see, closed. Well, I seen that early on. You know, because of the stiff jab. You know, I was just letting him run into the jab because, you know, it's speed. I have, I have tremendous speed. I have tremendous ability. As I told you earlier in the uh, room, I said, well, you know, I'm conditioned to go 12 rounds, and that's what I was conditioned for. That's why I was able to get up from the knockdown. You know, it was a good shot. You know, I, I gave him all respect for that. You know, but when I got up, it was like, well, it's time to go ahead and get him out of there. You hit him with Because I got careless. I got careless, Larry. You know, I started, you know, getting in control of everything. And then all of a sudden, he caught me with a good shot. You took some fearsome... He took some fearsome punches. This is a dream, Larry. This is truly a dream. I swear to God. This is a dream. No. This is a dream, man. This is a dream, man. Put the belt on. Put it on. This is truly a dream, man. I watched you on HBO a thousand times putting belts on guys or, you know, interviewing guys, and I said, one day it's going to be me. One day it's going to be me. And thank God that it was me today. You, you, I swear you, to God. You hit him with some fearsome punches. I hit him some great shots. Right? Early, and he Larry, didn't I, go. Well, yeah. Well, that's all. Well, that's great. That's great. Because you understand? Like my dad said, you know, you hit him with shots, let him take it. Like, oh, okay. You want to take a guy. shot? Yeah, be a tough guy. Just keep chopping on him. Just keep chopping on him. And eventually he's going to go. And that's what happened. As you've seen over there, he was flat on his ass. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I think that tells the whole story, Jim. Mike Tyson, flat on his whatever you want to call it. And then comes I'm thinking to myself for the first time, this is show and tell. And what this is showing is the real emotion of a human being who is just, in all these words, shocked the world. Um, and this is a story. Eventually, he was able to speak. We got on with the interview. But there's not even anything a close second, uh, in part because of the immensity of that night that upset that moment um to that non-speaking 15 or 20 seconds hmm. that's a great story that is a great story uh larry the other question i'm kind of overcome just hearing about that now <coughs> thinking thinking back about that uh we'll have to get buster sometime around he still lives in the columbus area we'll have to reunite you two that'd be fun <laughs> thank you it would be yeah